Hey guys, what's up? This is Mel, and I'm here to talk about Legends of Tomorrow, episode 309, titled Beeble the God of War, which premiered Tuesday, December 4, 2017 on the CW. I'm recording on January 17th, 2018. Uh, I know it's been a while, but uh, briefly after the crossover, when I recorded that, I came down a really bad cough that made it really hard to talk, let alone record. So then after, before I was able to fully heal from that, uh, the holidays came, so hugely busy. Um, so now I'm able to just sit down, um, especially with a week before premieres are starting, and just talk about the episodes. A huge spoiler alert. If you haven't seen 309, please go do so first. Then come back and see what to say about the episode. Otherwise, all my video reminders are up on screen. Take a moment to look over those. Um, I'm going to try to do this in 10 minutes. Let's see if I can. Let's start the 10-minute clock, and let's begin with what happened in this episode. So timeline-wise, it is shortly after episode 308. Um, so that's uh, the crossover, uh, part 4 as well as the uh, Professor Stein's death. Don't really know how long it's been since then, but I'm assuming it's within the week, but uh, we'll go from that. A uh, huge episode reminder is the fact that the pretty much many changes revolving around Christmas or the Christmas holidays, so there's that. Enemies being uh, Damien Dark and his daughter Eleanor, a.k.a. Nora, um, as well as the Vikings that keep changing history. So the huge uh, episode breakdown for the storylines are um, three different ones. First one being Bebo the God of War for Vikings. Second being the grieving for Professor Stein. And the third being Sarah meeting Mollus. So with the first storyline, Bebo the God of War for Vikings, um, this happens in the fact that the anachronism that the team has to deal with is Martin Stein of 1992, who is trying to buy a Bebo toy for uh, little Lily. Um, unfortunately, he became an anachronism back in time, and then for some reason the Vikings thought that this talking animatronic doll named Bebo, was like a blue furry thing, was a god. So they started worshipping him instead. This ended up affecting Christmas, changing the name every time they changed something, um, and they knew that things weren't right because of what, how Ava Sharp would acknowledge what was supposed to be Christmas. Um, so there's that. Second storyline being the grieving for uh, Professor Stein. We get therapy sessions with Leo X um, with the rest of the team. We get Jax trying to save the younger Professor Stein um, so that he would still be alive in the present day. But um, young Stein tells him to let him go. He's not going to read the, the letter forewarning him about his death. He's just going to let things be as they are. And in the end, Jax decides that he needs to leave the team to fully heal from the loss of his partner. Um, so there's that. And just to figure out what he is because he's not Firestorm anymore. So there's that. So third storyline is Sarah meeting Mollus. And this happens when she interrupts Damien Dark's attempt to leave with the, I'm guessing, time-traveling stone or something. Um, she and en Sarah ends up going into this alternate mesh dimension which holds Mollus. And all Sarah felt was this absence of feeling, a void, if you will, in the place of Mollus. And Sarah ends up reporting this to Ava, who is going to report it back to the Time Bureau, since this is what Rip Hunter has been obsessing over, this impending doom that is Mollus. So there's that. Now the last moments of the episode show John Constantine waiting for Sarah in the, um, uh, inside the Wave Rider asking for her help. So there's that. Now tidbits for the episode is that Damien Dark and his daughter Eleanor, or Nora, pose as Norse uh, mythology royalty, so Odin, and they try to make the Vikings follow their lead when um, their worshipping of Bebo fails. Um, we also see a holiday send-off feast um, before Jax leaves. He wanted to leave qu quietly with no goodbyes, but the team wouldn't have it. Um, also, we get Leo X trying to get Mick to stop drinking his pain away, try to get him to bed, like, if you can't stop drinking for, tw for 48 hours, I think it were then you got a problem, and Mick tries to uphold that, but Mick just becomes like an alcohol junkie trying to get his fix, um, so there's that. Most shocking moment of the episode, I have to say, would be that Jax left. I mean, I kind of 50-50, considering his other half was killed, but I just wasn't expecting it, or I didn't see news of it, but I hope this isn't a permanent leave of absence, so there's that. Uh, moving on to top three favorite moments, though, I have to say the huge holiday feast was was one of my favorites for the team just to have them finally sit down and um just celebrate in the the holiday spirit they did it last year which is great i feel like this is a great team building 
moment for them. I mean, we don't always get to see them having meals together or the mundane things that builds their team bonding together. But when it's moments like this that we get to see, um, I really like seeing it. So there's that. Um, another favorite of mine is Young Stein telling Jax to let him go. It was very emotional, but I really like that um, it was something Jax needed to hear and who better from a version of Stein himself. It just sucks that we won't get the the professor in the present day like to see that change um, but it needs to it needs to be what it needs to be and another another favorite was just the teasing cliffhanger with uh john constantine coming and asking for help um so there's that uh moving on to top three p moments the only peeve i really had was that Jax was leaving so i'll leave it at that um but what moment will i remember most if i look back on this episode um really it is the fact that bebo reminds me of the of a similar toy back in my childhood the furby if i don't know if anyone remembers that though but bebo really reminded me of a furby i mean a more creepier version of it but uh there's that reminder uh but moving on to random questions um i only have two and it was pretty much um first one being why is ava sharp's memory of christmas constantly changing faster than the legend's memories of it being christmas now the sh- Every time a change happens in the time of the Vikings, Ava, whenever she's referencing Christmas, Ava always calls it by a different name, showing that history hasn't changed to what it's supposed to be. Now, while the Legends team still remember it as being Christmas, so the only way I figured out an answer is because that's when Ava is still in the timeline. So she's still affected by the changes, while the Legends team... Um, are either stuck in the temporal zone or they're not specifically in the timeline when it happens or because they're so out of their time that it takes them longer for them to receive the change. Um, But then when the change happens when Ava is with them out of time, it's confusing. That's, That's one of the things I don't really like about the show is just that I don't get how some things can get changed and not affect them and yet some things do get changed and it does affect them aside from the direct changes like it it personally affects that person so there's that now second question is why wasn't young stein's memory erased of his latest encounter with time travel as we know every time the legends team um does any time traveling stuff they're always erasing memories so that nothing is changed in the timeline but with professor stein it seems that they haven't done that now that they're able to do it so i'm wondering is that because he's still a member of he is a younger version of their former teammate or is it just another reason or was it just forgotten at that point um so there's that but moving on to predictions very quickly based off the promo for 310 um not only does the episode return on february 12 2018 the monday at 8 a.m it's taking or 8 p.m it's taking over supergirl's time slot for the remainder of the season but we see john constantly coming and asking for help um against something i'm assuming it's against mollus but we'll have to wait and see about that um but because there's still a good month before the episode airs there is no synopsis released for the episode so we're still left um um in the dark about that um but it will be definitely interesting to see if Constantine is coming back because of Mollus. Because I'm wondering what Mollus is. Because as you know, Mollus is being introduced in the same way that Savitar was introduced on The Flash. Being a disembodied voice. Having a whole bunch of followers and stuff like that. Um, but with Constantine in the mix and he's connected to Mollus. Mollus uh, Constantine is more of the magic use uh, variety. Um, so I'm wondering if Mollus is meant to be the same thing. I mean, I've read other theories from people online and i've heard some of other reacting um reactions of who they think mollus is and then there's also people from the comics who might know a bit more but um they're saying he might be a demonic entity uh so um i'm wondering if that's going to be the case we do know that that is possible because of constantine because of damien dark because of um um sarah's resurrection so i'm just wondering who exactly mollus is um what he's capable of um but yeah there is that um but that's pretty much all i have to say about the episode 
Um, but what do you guys think of the episode? What do you guys like about it? What do you think is going to happen next? Let me know in the comments down below. Love to hear your own thoughts, theories, and predictions about what you think is going to happen next. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos if you haven't done so already. Uh, so if you want, check out my Tumblr page. The link for that is down below. I read blog promos, web clips, quotes, gifs, synopses, news, all the good stuff. All found in one, all found in one place to so go check that out. Uh, also, check out my WordPress account, which is connected to Tumblr, which also has everything you post online attached to it. It's more organized, but it's still a work in progress, so keep that in mind. But I do hope you check it out. Um, but otherwise, guys, I think that's everything for today. Uh, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you come back um, next uh, in a month or so when um, the episode airs, February 12th. And see what I have to say about the mid-season premiere, guys. But until then, this is Mel. Wish you all a great day, a great week wherever you are. And I have 10 seconds left on the clock, so I did it. So bye, guys.